Immigrant Blues. It's an old story from the previous century about my father and me. The same old story from yesterday morning about me and my son. It's called Survival Strategies and the Melancholy of Racial Assimilation. It's called Psychological Paradigms of Displaced Persons. Called The Child Who'd Rather Play Than Study. My name is Ruth Murray Bay. 92, I'll be 93 in February. So my memory is getting a little shorter now. <laughs> there are three camps in Pulsit. One, two, and three. I was eighth grade, I think. So it just happened that our class, one class was in our block at the end. Uh, in a rec hall, we used to have a rec hall and uh, mess hall. Mm -hmm. Do you know about the camp? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so our school was there, so just a short walk. That's why it's not good. It was just all fun for us. <laughs> Talk to somebody like uh, five years older than me. Too bad my sister not here. Uh, no housework. I mean, no, uh, no work. Uh, uh, let's see. We just, you know, with our friends yeah. all day. Yeah. So everything was fun. We had to fill bags with straw for our mattress and sometimes there'd be snakes and stuff around. Because this was in the desert in Poston, Arizona. And, um, and then we had to walk say half a block to the the train, they call it a train, oh. and shower, and no partition in the beginning. You're sitting on the toilet next to anybody oh, else, yeah. and showers, no partition, so the older gals, like when I was 13 and that, yeah. so it didn't bother me too much, but older gals or well-formed girls, it is Take a shower, slips on. Yeah, so could no partition in showers either. We used to go to, we used to say town, we'd go to in El Centro to buy shoes once a year. Once That's a year. all they put it, yeah. And then when it wore out, we put cardboard and newspaper in the shoes. Because oh, when yeah. it rained, our feet socked it all wet. So it's just once a year, shoes. <laughs> Older brother, he was in service. And they didn't allow him to come into Boston. So he was eligible for the 20000 so he got that because they wouldn't allow them him to see, come and sit, visit us in Boston. Oh, so, so it's a good thing they knew because they found out, and so he got his allotment or whatever it's yeah, called. Allotment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you were in Boston. Were we just? Dude, some random guy came up to me and was just being Korean. <laughs> I was like, I'm you not You got a Korean, table of Japanese bro. and Chinese people, yeah, and you pick Korean. Korean. But I have to tell you about our landlord. He saved everything. He brought truckload of stuff to come for us, and brought another car. We just able to buy a new car. 1941. Yeah. So. He was called Jab Lover, but he didn't care. Okay. Yeah, he owned a lot of land. Okay. So we lived on his land. 
so he saved all our stuff. And you know what taco one is? Mm-hmm, taco one. Uh, we used to jar that, and I guess he didn't refrigerate anything. Oh, smelly. So, <laughs> well, so by the time we got it, it was almost black, but it's soft, <laughs> but so much vinegar, it didn't spoil. So okay. we still ate it. You still ate it? <laughs> number one, right? You had number and one? Number four. Number four, okay, okay this one. is you. Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll be one right now. Let's see, we just, you know, with our friends yeah. all day, and then you go eat in the mess hall. At first we ate family style, but later on everybody just ate with their friends. Yeah. But every time we give we didn't like the food, we gave it to my dad. Yeah, yeah. so, not the good food. <laughs> I don't think anybody was obese in camp. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when we moved to, straight from camp, we moved to San Jose. My okay. sister had a ranch, and they had Japanese town in San Jose. Yeah, the Japan. But, yeah, so we did have, uh, JCL, and they have dances and stuff. Uh, not too many uh, Japanese, but my sister had a farm and a big house, and a, they had an extra house, so we lived there. It was pretty lonely. I think I, one day I got 10 letters from camp. Oh. I used to write a lot of letters because it was so lonely. Yeah. After camp life in San Jose, we didn't have friends or anything. Yeah. Yeah, so we had to take, uh, what was hard was when my brother and I had to walk about, I'm going maybe half a mile mm -hmm. to the main highway to catch a Greyhound bus oh, yeah. to go to high school. And sometimes, you know, they call us Japs. about her experiences in, in 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 the camp and she was like she it seemed like she was downplaying like how hard it was mm -hmm. um, I remember I think a section where she was talking about like the, the living conditions and like the and like their bathrooms and how they had like no stalls or like how she couldn't see her like brother um, and then she was like yeah it was fine um, you know, what do you think of that as she was like talking about it and like reliving certain like things and um, I don't know, just talking about like the horrible conditions, I just thought like it's clearly not a good time. So it was just interesting that she just kept saying like, oh, I had fun, I was a kid. And that's definitely something that I feel like a lot of Asians tend to do. It's like you're supposed to like have this idea that in order, it's like a rite of passage. Is that, is that the right word? Rite of passage to like face like racism and violence and hatred because you're like the other so it's like normal and that's just something you just have to deal with and like you don't want to cause any more problems because like you're supposed to like just deal with like the consequences of being a, an immigrant to the u.s so honestly i don't know if i like have like thick noodles mm. yeah, I, I, I prefer it to the thin one you prefer it thick, right? Yeah. I like it thick too. A really big Chinese thing. You eat like thick noodles. My like my parents or my mom, she and her family, they um, were war refugees from from oh, Vietnam. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's actually that, I didn't know that. Um, does she ever talk about like? Um, yeah. Her, like, what happened? Yeah, like, does she ever talk about, like, also her experiences here, like, compared to there? Like, does she, like, get better here? Yeah, um, she left Vietnam when she was, like, six, seven. So she remembers it, you know, it being fun. Of course, there, there was a war. 
think it, um, yeah. I think overall they were generally sheltered from the war as kids. Yeah. So they were kind of like also they didn't like fully understand the horrors of it. Yeah. And I remember she was telling me that um, the way they left Vietnam was they found passage on like these masts, like boats. Yeah. And like so they're like these boats that were taking like Vietnamese refugees out of um, out of Vietnam and like to other countries like in the Philippines or in like somewhere in the Pacific and they were and I remember she was she, she just kind of like nonchalantly said yeah we were we were on the boat we got ta- we got attacked by pirates once um, and then <laughs> we crazy. and then we were on like an island in the Philippines for like a couple months until a US carrier came and like it was just so nonchalant no. like like she was a kid she got attacked but she was like living on the boat and then on like a random island <clears throat> yeah from her home <clears throat> yeah and then she was like this is five yeah and then that's so funny and like and, and it goes like like they never talk about it super seriously like they always like casually mention it yeah right i feel that it's like oh yeah like we came to america and and like all these bad things happened to us, but you know, that's normal. That's not like a surprise. Like that's something that like they expect. In China, like my mom lived on a farm, um, like in, the, I'm not, wait, no, she lived in the mountains. My dad lived on a farm, but the reason why he lived on a farm was because it was one of the communist camps. He was put in the communist camps like during the Cultural Revolution. And it's funny how you mentioned how your mom always also like downplays like her time in Vietnam. Like my dad was a kid too, so he kind of looks, his time in the communist camps with like fondness too he'll like call it when i was a cowboy like that that would be like his reference to his childhood it's like oh when i was a cowboy like no when you were in the communist camps She like had a worse experience outside of the camps. It seems like, um, even though she described all like, these nasty like conditions and the, like dehumanizing conditions in which they like had to live in, she seemed to like not enjoy her like life of freedom outside. Especially because she was like really lonely, and that's something like I really resonated with since I also grew up in a really predominantly white community. So um, just having that like lack of community and like just a feeling of isolation and like just being othered out is something that really I feel like resonated with me. Yeah. I knew like, I mean obviously I always knew I was a minority as a kid but I just remember this one time in high school like when this kid, this little white boy called me a chink and the girls at my school that were friends with him were saying, oh, like, he didn't mean it like that, like, you should forgive him, like, don't report him, don't get him in trouble. So, like, in that sense, like, I kind of, like, I remember that day specifically, because I was like, wow, like, I really am on my own, like, they don't care about me, and, like, what, like, my, I guess, like, I don't want to say they don't care about my life, but they don't care about, like, the struggles that, like, I go through, that, like, they don't experience. Yeah, like, I, I it's, it's kind of like in, um, in, in your age interview she was called a jap and yeah. like she just kind of like it seemed like back then it was just like n- n- normal yeah she and was like, like yeah that, that, that was it i was called jab going to high school on the greyhound bus on the greyhound bus by all these white kids yeah. and i just had to deal with it basically honestly yeah i really felt that because i remember i felt pretty powerless after that because like what am like what can i do like no one really cared that is interesting i feel like I had the opposite experience where um, I grew up in a very Asian community, mm-hmm. in a very like Vietnamese community, like, you know, like back at home, you know, in Berkeley we have these two pho restaurants, but back at home mm-hmm. there's like a pho restaurant on like almost like every block. Right. There's like so many, like, there's like a whole plaza with just Vietnamese stuff. And like, I never got that sense of, oh, I'm the other in the community. It's an ancient story from yesterday evening called Patterns of Love in Peoples of Diaspora, called Loss of the Home Place and the Defilement of the Beloved, 
called I Want to Sing, But I Don't Know Any Songs. <laughs> 